everyone, Dave here, and welcome to my next Warhammer 40,000 builds. In this build video series, I'm going to be building models from the Dark Imperium box set, the ultimate box set for Warhammer 40,000. I'm going to begin with some Plague Marines, some Death Guard, the Servants of Nurgle, the vile traitors and heretics that turned from the Imperium Light. I'm going to be painting them for you, showing you which paints I'll be using, as well as talking about the lore. So... Let's see which model I'm building today. Today I am starting with the Bright Walker. As you can see, I've already done a brace spraying of Caliban Green. There are lots of chains, lots of mutations, lots of pustules on this model, so I'm going to have so much fun. I'm going to have the horns painted. A little Nurgling with his little bell shall be painted as well. The armor, the robes, the whole funness of it. And I'm going to do and try something with the bell. Anyway, let me tell you which paints I am going to be using. First off, a layer of Istefan Green, which will be mainly for the armor. I'm going to do boat gun metal for the chains that bind us. And a base of warp block bonds for the bells and some of the armor decorations. A rat skin flesh for the cape. A layer of fist and green for the growths. A layer of pilchard wrist flesh for the nurgling. A base of rhydox hide for any wood on the model. A layer of brass scorpion to help highlight the bells and such. Nurgling green for, well, the Nurgling. A moot green to help highlight some of the pustules. And finally, a glaze of witch fire green. Let's start the painting. So, why have I chosen these colours? I have chosen these colours because the Death Guard that I am painting are servants of Nurgle, the Chaos God of Decay, Rot, Plague. You get the idea. These were once loyal to the Emperor, these Marines, for they fell to the worship of the Chaos God when their Primarch betrayed the Imperium during the Horus Heresy. We'll have more of that in a later video, which I'll do specifically for when I paint the Primarch and build the Primarch of the Death Guard, the Demon Prince Magalian. Anyway, as you can see, I'm doing the armor with that Estevan Green. Going over the base, highlighting the armor and all that funness. Now, Brightbringers are a type of Chaos Space Marine warrior. These Plague Marines wield gigantic bells of Nurgle on their armor. The bells are capable of generating sonic waves that bring pain and desolation to the enemy. Heralds of Pestilence, Bright Bringers move before the main Death Guard advance. Their primary role of a Bright Bringer is to sow dismay and weakness amidst the enemy ranks. The discordance of their chiming bells send waves of empathy rolling across the battlefield to batter not only the enemy's physical senses, but their souls. The blessings of Nurgle manifest wherever the toxic waves hit home. Each thunderous toll, rearing the foe down a little more and spreading sickness and corruption further. The enemy's will to fight erodes, and faith and conviction falls in the face of the onslaught. In close proximity, the toll from the Brightbringer torments enemy psychers. Not only must these unfortunates deal with the violent waves that threaten to overwhelm their tightly controlled abilities, but they must also face the corruption of their psyche. 
every plague company counts Sprite-bringers among their ranks, but they are especially prevalent in the vicinities of the third, such as war bands as the Putrid Choir or the Dextorious Corps, rarely take to the battlefield without two or three Bright-bringers to help them into battle. While Lord Gothaxax always has seven Bright-bringers accompany him, seven being the holy number of Nurgle. Speaking of Nurgle, he is one of the four major ruinous powers. He was the third to awaken of the four Chaos Gods, fully coming into existence during Terror's Middle Ages. Plagues sweeping across continents in the wake of his birth. His titles include Plague Father, Fly Lord, Great Corruptor, Plague Lord, Master of Pestilence, Lord of Decay, and represents mobility, disease, and physical corruption. As we said before, his sacred number is seven. The traits are bloated and diseased written. Also known as the his main demons are the Great Unclean One, the Plague Bringer, Nurglins, Beast of Nurgles, Rot Flies. Of the four Chaos Gods, Nurgle is said to be the most involved with the plight of mortals. Those affected by his contagions often turn to him in order to escape their suffering. The physical likeness of Nurgle is described as a gigantic and bloated with corruption, with foul curled leather and neurotic skin. Nurgle can also be regarded as the lord of all, because all things, no matter how solid and permanent they seem, are liable to physical corruption. Indeed, the very process of construction and creation foreshadows destruction and decay. The place of today is tomorrow's ruin, the maiden of the morning is the crone of the night, and the hope of the moment is but the fountain stone of everlasting regret. Oh, that's a bit deep. I do apologise, I went, um, I went somewhere. All the Chaos Gods are embodiments of hopes, fears, and other strong emotions and concepts generated by the mortal races. In Nurgle's case, the source of power is inscrutably denial, self-destruction, and the living sphere of inedible death and disease, as well as their unconscious responses to fear, which is power of life the moving power of mankind and other races. Nurgle coaxes new worshippers into his fold by stripping them of any other options, inflicting a spiritual tan upon the populace that is reflected outwards as disease and pestilence. The desperate, outcrasted and dying come to Nurgle to find elevation from their pain. To these potential devotees, Nurgle provides not redemption from the elements, but rather comfort within their suffering. Those blessed by Nurgle are granted relief from physical pain, as well as a bizarre satisfaction in their depressive state, for it is a twisting of a being's perceptive of reality, turning to solution and denial into truth and acceptance, just as self-respect and vanity turn into monstrous self-satisfaction. Nurgle and his demons, in contrast to their putrid appearance, are dual and friendly in Dinema. His demon servants and mortal followers usually demonstrate a disturbing jollity and joy at the pestilence that he has inflicted. Seeing the plagues as gifts and the cries of the victims as gratitude rather than agony. This is demonstrated on the demon world of Bothras where an endless chain of crazed rivers circles the planet's equator in a never-ending dance. Nurgle is often referred to as Grandfather Nurgle, Father Nurgle, or Papa Nurgle by his followers, 
because of his perpetual nature. His main energy enemy is Zinch, the Lord of Change, because their power comes from the opposite source. Zinch is hope and observation, while Nurgle is deference born of despair and hopelessness. Now you know a bit more about the lore of the Death Guard, of Nurgle, of the Brightbringer, and I hope you understand why I have painted him in these colours. One, for the dark green of the armour, which is the standard of the Death Guard, even before they went traitor, to the green pustules that leak out of the armour's cracks where it's been shot, and the fluids of Nurgle's plagues leak out. The mutations, the extra growths of tentacles, which are pink and horrific, sprout out, and the bony blue growths that sprout and grow. Not to mention the fact that the lighter colours, the silvers and the bronzes, show the heraldry of Nurgle, the joy in being Nurgle's herald, and the revelation it takes in Nurgle's gifts. Not to mention the washes, which help with the corrosion of the armour, showing sl almost like a slimy texture for the green, and a almost dab and decaying colour of the browns. I have thoroughly enjoyed painting this model. I've taken my time with it, thought about it, and it's probably one of the better models that I've painted here. Anyway, it's nearly time to build. Now that all parts are painted, it's time to assemble this plague marine, this vile traitor and heretic. Now finally putting him together using plastic glue, I have discovered a way to make it so it doesn't go so uh, well everywhere and corrode the paint by using very little and sometimes neat metal bit as well. Put the arms on and then the backpack and then he's ready. And there it is, all built and ready to go. The Brightbringer, the vile plague marine with the bell that tolls, decreasing the leadership and morale in his foes while increasing the ferocity of the other Plague Marines off the Death Guard. Probably one of the best models I've ever painted. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Please do comment, rate, and subscribe. Until next one, death to the False Emperor.